Ciao, Pogorizia. Did I say that right? I'm trying. <laughs> so uh, it's, it truly is an honor. I want to uh, first, before we get into the presentation, just thank everyone, uh, the organizers, the committee that put everything together for a great week, also the other uh, finalists that joined and the judges for being here. It's a great opportunity for us and I'm excited to share a little bit more about what we're building in the ecosystem. So EAS, EAS is an infrastructure public good for making attestations on or off chain. We're completely open source, it's permissionless, and uh, we are tokenless and free to use. This might not make much sense on why it's important, so I'll spend the next like two minutes just explaining about what EAS is and then we'll actually jump into a video to go through some uh, real use cases. So public goods, they start with passion. So EAS is, is being built by some of the earliest Ethereans, and uh, the projects that we're working on are really to further the ecosystem, and we're excited to introduce our, our public good to you all. We were sitting, we were thinking, well, why hasn't anyone solved digital identity? It's the holy grail of use cases because it can unlock so much, and there's no shortage of apps that are trying. And we realized that the identity ecosystem is completely fragmented. Devs have a never-ending list of protocols that they have to learn about identity. We have WorldCoin, Lens, BrightID, Disco, Spruce, Sismo, Gitcoin Passport, NextID as an example, and the list keeps going on. And that fragmentation is really hard for a dev to really understand how to start building attestations or uh, identity. So we're thinking, well, what is identity? And, so what is identity? Uh, maybe everyone's building a layer too high. And we, we were thinking, well, at one point in your life, you didn't have an identity, and then you did. So when was that moment? And that moment is when your mother actually attested to your name. She said, this is my son, Vitalik, as an example. And then throughout life, other entities started testing about different aspects of who you are. Your doctor attests to your date of birth, Perhaps the government attests to your national ID, your school attests to your grades, your employer attests that you work there, friends attest that they like you, and the list goes on. And so what we realize is you can actually represent identity as an aggregate of attestations over time. And those attestations that matter look different based off of their context. So your identity with your employer might look different than your identity with your friends, as an example. So, what we realized is if you actually want to solve for identity, building a protocol specific for identity is really hard. Where we first need to start is to build an infrastructure layer where any entity can attest about anything. So that's what attestations are. We can actually go beyond identity with attestations. We can start attesting to things like smart contract audits, as an example, where the audit has been uh, attested to by the, the auditor, like Quantstamp, Open Zeppelin, or others. You can build things like quadratic voting systems, proof of provenance, registries of land on Ethereum, and so much more. The feedback and traction has been uh, really amazing uh, for, for us just to see. Uh, we launched at ETH Denver on mainnet, and since then, Optimism has upgraded their attestation station contracts to the EAS standard. We have developer ecosystems like Devfolio using us for quadratic voting systems for their hackathons. Gitcoin's exploring uh, passports, attesting to, to the stamps, and we're just receiving really positive feedback from other ecosystem uh, influencers on the importance of developing this credibly neutral uh, infrastructure public good. So let's jump into EAS, an actual demo. So there should be an MP4 file that was uh, provided. I'm gonna do my best to narrate through this in the course of like six minutes or so. So this is the Explorer. We built a lot of tools to make the onboarding experience really easy. We're live on Ethereum, Mainnet, Arbitrum, Sepolia, Optimism, Gorly, and we'll be deploying on Optimism Bedrock as a, a part of the OP stack soon. If you look, this is just a registry of attestations or a list of attestations that have been made from an address to an address, if it was off-chain or on-chain. And EAS operates by registering a schema about any data topic and then you make an attestation with the other contract towards that topic. So this is uh, a schema for a demo participant, as an example. It has a string as a team name, a presentation topic for string, and then an array of addresses as presenters. So imagine if uh, Ed Kahn attested to 
Ethereum attestation service as being a demo participant. So this is an on-chain attestation record. It has a unique ID. It's from someone. There's a created date. You can automatically allow attestations to expire or manually revoke them uh, if you are the attester. So we have the decoded data here, and it shows the team name, uh, Ethereum attestation service, and then the related schema data that was attested to. We wanted to start uh, extending the functionality of our schema. So with the age of, in the age of AI, with all this generated content, we were thinking, well, how can we actually build a schema that might help creators attest to the authenticity of their content? So we created a simple schema, which includes just a content hash that's a bytes32 field. And we'll ex well, I'll show you what else you can do when you're making an attestation. But you can apply an expiration time. So if you want this attestation to automatically expire after uh, a week, you can do that. And you can also reference attestations to so use them like composable Lego blocks. So imagine you attest to a smart contract audit. You can uh, uh, reference that attestation and provide evidence to it. So this content attestation, we're just going to grab a file. And it's just the PowerPoint of this presentation, actually. And so we're going to, it doesn't upload, into, it's not stored anywhere. It's just using um, a SHA-256 to hash it. And now we're attesting to that hash of that content on chain. So we're making a Sepolia transaction here. That's my loom. I have to go back. And what you'll see on this record is that this attestation was made by an address. So if I'm a content creator, that would be the from address. Right? And I've attested to this hash of the content that I produced. And anyone can independently come to this verification online and verify a document. If I upload the wrong document, it's not going to hash the same. So it's not verified. If I were to actually upload the right document, then it will hash. And so this will allow people to independently attest to the content that they're producing for authenticity. So if you're a creator, imagine attesting to your podcast, if you're Joe Rogan, as an example. We also believe privacy is incredibly important. So instead of using ZKPs, we actually built a pretty cool way to attest to private data and selectively disclose it using a Merkle tree. So imagine this is a government attesting to Vitalik's information. Okay? It could include something like a full name, Vitalik. It could include something else like his address, Leet Staker Lane. And we can also attest if someone's over 21, so it doesn't have to be the direct like, birth date as an example, which that should be a bool field. And you can attest to other like, very private information, such as like, his national ID card or his passport. And what we're doing here is we're attesting on chain, and, but we're actually encoding each piece of the, each uh, data field as part of the Merkle tree. And it gets hashed all the way up into a Merkle root. And so I'm gonna, we're attesting, and it's made on chain. So now imagine if this said, uh, from a, the government to Vitalik, and they've attested to this private data Merkle tree, uh, root hash. You can selectively grab a full name as Vitalik, and let's say he just wants to share that he's over 21. He can instantly generate a Merkle tree proof, and it's all salted, so you can't brute force it. And if you're a person just visiting the scanner, you can see this Merkle root hash. And now I can actually go back and grab that proof. And this can all be done through a smart contract, too. Now here's his proof, and you verify the proof. And then all that's disclosed is the Vitalik Buterin's name and that he's over 21, not his national ID card or anything else like that. Not every attestation actually needs to be made on chain, though. Uh, so this is an off-chain example where we're just saying GM from Podgorica. And we're, make, we're just signing a typed EIP712 type signature. So we're just signing that with our, our key. And it made an off-chain attestation record. It's not The cool thing about this is it's not stored anywhere. It's actually completely encoded in the uh, URI fragment of the URL. And the attestation UID is actually a hash of the entire attestation. And if you were to scan that uh, URL or the QR code, we actually gzipped and coded everything in there, so you could actually pass these around pretty easily. And the, the thing that off-chain attestations don't have is a timestamp. There's no block time. 
So what we've built is a way for you to actually attest to the UID, which is a hash of the attestation, on-chain. And so that actually gives it proof of existence that it did occur at that period of time. And this is still completely private. It's not stored anywhere. If you want to, you can publish it to IPFS or download it. So that was a quick rundown. Uh, we can't do this alone. Come join us and build more trust online. We have a full SDK, GraphQL endpoints, endless documentation, and amazing community support. So our question to you is, what are you going to build? Uh, Havala, if I said that right. Uh, thank you so much for your time.